Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck with me, Frank Baltieres. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about FRP panels or different options for your walls. You guys have asked about this continuously because you guys saw me put some of these in and you're like, hey, you haven't walked us through the FRP and how you're installing it. Do you screw it? Do you glue it? What do you do? So let's talk about the FRP right now. This is actually a smooth FRP that I bought. But let me give you the details right now. So let's talk about the wall coverings that you can use on your food truck, the different options that you have. On my other uh, food truck that I have, I actually use stainless steel on the entire food truck everywhere from the walls up to the ceiling that you see right there. It was all full of stainless steel. However, because of the prices that went up crazy, I paid seven, about $60 for these sheets. I bought 20 sheets of stainless steel about two years ago, all right? Two years ago in 2020, in I would say January of 2020. We know what happened right after that and the prices just went stupid up. So the prices of stainless steel like this don't exist anymore. Don't ask me where I got them from because the price is not even existence of what it is of about $60, $70 a sheet of 304 stainless steel mill finish is what this is right here. It's about 20 or 22 gauge is what it is. So underneath here, underneath the hood, you want to use it because it gets super hot. FRP would probably melt <laughs> once you turn on all your uh, cooking equipment. So don't use FRP and I don't even think they allow it underneath the hood there. So always use stainless steel. And right here, what I have is smooth stainless steel. I bought this from Menards. If you guys aren't in the Midwest, you guys probably don't know what Menards is. It's like a Home Depot, but more of a, like a little small in the middle. It's not small, because it's a pretty big company, but it's mostly in the Midwest, Wisconsin, Indiana, Chicago area, Illinois. It's called Menards. Will they ship to you? I don't know. I know they ship to the store, and that's where I bought these, about $30 a sheet. So. 300 and some dollars a sheet right here, $30 a sheet. So this is the reason why I'm using this on this side and up in the ceilings, as you can see right there. Again, thank you for, uh, I'm not done talking yet because I, we're actually gonna install this side today. I just wanted to make sure that I say this in the video. Thank you for all the comments that you guys leave. Um, thank you for subscribing, for sharing the videos. Always make sure that you comment on the videos because uh, a lot of you guys send DMs to me on Instagram and Facebook, and I usually don't check them because they go to spam. And if uh, I happen to check it, it's just because it, I just so happened to check it and you got lucky. <laughs> but please comment on the videos. I answer each and every one myself. Uh, it might not get to it quickly, quickly, but I do get to each and every one, and I try to answer all your questions. If you guys need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one help, uh, email me at rollingburritosfoodtruck at gmail.com with the subject line one-on-one -on -one coaching. I did start that. I do have uh, a few that are scheduling to be able to do more like a one-on-one -on -one style that where they can ask me literally anything that they want. And if I do have the expertise to answer it, then for sure I will answer that question. But right now we're working on the FRP. We're going to be working on this side right over here. So let's get to it because we're going to be chopping, chopping away, measuring away, and uh, taking advantage of this week that's about to be in the 40s and the 50s out here in Chicago. And also when it comes to the FRP, you can buy these little transition pieces. These are a lot less expensive than a stainless steel transition piece. As you can see how I talked to you about, these are kind of like leftover stainless steel pieces that I was sold and I knew that they were kind of rough on some spots but right now that transition piece will actually cover those little dents so everything else just with the little wipe whoosh, it's gonna look real nice this right here is my backing I'm gonna put a stainless steel piece right here I have to custom cut that so there's not really a way for me to tell you that it's the dimensions to cut just to cover that gap up. I don't want to be able to see that. And then underneath here, I run a piece of wood from there all the way to the other side of the hood. If you guys can see over there, I actually bought it right there, but I must have bought the wrong one because this one's six feet long and I need one that's seven. I don't even know how I made that mistake, but I haven't opened it so I can return it still. 
but that's kind of what I'm working on right now. These are the FRP transition pieces that I also bought from Menards when I special ordered this ceiling right here. I gotta switch these screws out. I just put these in temporarily, but these are gonna be white. Just like I have over there, I have white ones over there. So that's what I'm working on right now. Just wanted to give you a little show and tell so you guys can be on the same page as me. So let's get back to it. Something that you will wanna do if you have the Cargo Mate trailer, I don't know what kind of nose you have on your trailer, but I took off all the little trim pieces as I have shown on a previous video so I could run all my electrical. But this little gap in the corner right here, that's almost like little trim piece, you gotta take that off as well. And we make that into a, almost like a transition, in transition piece because in the front, we're gonna have a oval piece a full piece that goes from the right side all the way here to the left side that covers this. And I'm gonna show you how we do that with the FRP. Just wanted to show you how we take out all the trim pieces. Don't be scared to destroy your trailer just a little bit because you're gonna make it so much more beautiful. So if you have to tear down a couple of the trim pieces, just do it. We're gonna make it look better. So let's keep moving on this FRP. Just wanted to show you that I as well destroy my trailer just a little bit. So now that you're getting ready to install your wall covering being either the FRP or the stainless steel, I've used both and they work exactly the same way. There's no difference. You're just still gonna cut, measure and cut, measure and cut. Stainless steel takes a little bit longer and you got a lot more sparks flying all over the place. But nevertheless, you gotta do the same procedure. As I said again, measure and cut. So I'm gonna measure this part right here because this is gonna be a full piece. I have my switch outlet for my water pump right here. And a little bit more down right there is the outlet that I have for my water pump. And also I use it for my propane leak detector. So it's an outlet and a switch outlet there, just so you know what's going on down there. But same thing, like I said, I have to measure from here. So I kind of have an idea of how I went over here on this side. But over here, I go from the corner it's about 30, 34 inches is what I have because I'm going to go right here from the lip of the door and I'm going to go straight up because I'm going to use that piece right there as another piece to make it so much, to make it easier to cut uh, because it's going to be a big square instead of trying to like get all that little angle, just cut a big square and then I'm going to measure that. So let me get to chopping, chopping and measuring and let me film that for you guys. But FRP so easy to cut this is what i'm using it throws a little bit of dust but still works really well it's uh, my multi-tool with a multi-material blade on there some milwaukee multi-material blade i'm sure there's other ways to cut frp that's what i'm using so far and it works pretty well i haven't had any issues with it it cuts a nice smooth cut obviously it's all manual so you have to keep your um you know wrist from shaking and keep it nice and smooth so let's get back to this welcome to my little storage facility that i have here inside another trailer building a trailer from a trailer these are all the frp pieces that i bought from menards right there a little storage place right here oh they give you this little cardboard make sure you keep that because that's gonna be almost like your stepping spot these are 48 inches in width 120 inches in length, which is 10 feet. 10 feet of smooth FRP. Here's another hood actually that I'm gonna be using on this trailer. Maybe, I don't know if I ever get to it. But, but for now it's used as almost like my storage con storage trailer. But that's what I'm working on. I have my measurements that I'm gonna be uh, laying down right here. And then I just cut, cut, and then I put on the wall. And I put some glue underneath that let me show you what glue i use and screws but just wanted to show you where i keep all my frp make sure you have a clean space to work when i had my stainless steel pieces i put them on a sawhorse outside and cut it and i left the stainless steel outside because it's more weather resistant this frp is a little bit more tricky cutting it inside here in this confined space it is not fun so if you can take it outside and it's nice and sunny take it outside and cut it it'll make your life a lot easier all right, so let me show you what FRP adhesive I'm using. This is the one that I bought, F, uh, FRP adhesive, Fast Grab. And I bought this one as well with the same order from Menards. Again, 
It's tight bond, but brand fast grab FRP adhesive. And it kind of just works almost like um, glue. Oh, sorry, got glue. Um, mortar when you're putting on tile. That's how I've been using it. I bought a trowel that I use on here. I'm trying to open this bad boy up. There it is. Oh, so right here, that's exactly what I'm using. It's a little bit uh, rusty, but don't mind that. Uh, but that's how I am doing. You can either put it on the panel itself or you can put it on the wall. Um, I'm using it on the wall for right now just because I have no help to be able to put this on here. So I'm gonna put this on this wall right here and I'm gonna glue this piece in and that way it's all said and done. So join me in on how I put that last piece on this wall, well, the last piece for today, and uh, that way I get it rocking and rolling, it's all said and done. So let's get to it, FRP adhesive, if you wanted to put both, and then I do have white Phillips head screws that I use on here, and uh, that way it stays everything white, and you can just buy these on Amazon as well, I'll link them in the description for you to purchase if you wanna use the same kind of style that I have here. Get ready for some wrist cramping if you're not used to this oh my gosh i was think i was sore the day after man and also make sure that you wear clothes that you can get dirty i wore this jacket and i got it dirty and i'm like crap i didn't think i was gonna get it dirty so make sure you wear some uh some some clothes that you don't mind if a little glue gets on it all right so i'm here i'm in the front of the trailer right now and it gets a little bit more tricky and creative when you're in the front depending on what, what kind of nose that you have you can have two options you can have a v nose on your trailer which i'm not a fan of i've explained it in other videos why because of the generator tray in the front and it takes up a lot of real estate that i can put the generator the propane tanks on the tongue so that's why i stay away from venos trailers if you have one then you have to make it work somehow but in this one we have uh, like a small rounded nose on this trailer there's a cargo made trailer so what we have to do is on the sides right here if you guys can see let's see if i can get this camera closer Whoop, there it is so I, right here on the corner, I took out, I took this little scrap piece of FRP and I'm just going to kind of set it on here, almost like a, uh, just kind of like a template of what I want. So if I want it right there, I, I'm going to make it, I'm not going to make it a straight 90. This is a curve. So this piece right here is curved into, into the other piece of FRP be in this wall, just so you know, there's a slight curve in the floor. And then what I did is wherever I liked it there, I came over here and I marked it on this side. And then I did that the same on the opposite side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm gonna measure what it meant, what this scrap piece of FRP measures to the line that I marked right here. And I did the same thing over there. And then I'm just gonna add this difference. And that technically should give me what my width will be on a 48 inch tall piece so i'm going to use a 48 inch tall because i'm going to cut it into one piece and then the top part where i'm going to do all these little stupid intricate cuts up here you guys can see that i'm going to cut it into two different pieces right down the middle because it makes it so much easier to cut and you're not like fumbling with all these uh, measurements and trying to get it very accurate so that's the easiest way to do it that i have found just measure, give yourself a mark on the wall, measure the other side, give yourself another measurement on the wall, combine those two and add the gap, and there's your full piece. So that's a little trick that you can use on the front wrapping, the wall wrapping, covering of your trailer. So let me do that, and then I'm gonna install it. This piece right here is already dry. Came out real nice. So uh, we're gonna finish that up with some uh, switches and outlets, and that should be it for that one. We're back on this job of putting FRP adhesive. It gets a little bit tedious, back and forth, back and forth. Make sure you do a cleanup job if it does fall on the floor. Here we are putting the panel. It measures 84 inches from left to right, and it's the same uh, width, 48 inches high. It's just a regular factory piece, just 84 left to right. So now that I installed these FRP pieces down here, let me show you how it turns out, how it has turned out so far. As you can see, as I mentioned, I have a slight curve on the corners here, even on this side. That way I don't use any transition pieces and it's a nice crisp line all the way to the top. I do use this one right here. Um, that way it connects the pieces together. 
and it's a nice transition piece that comes with the with the FRP that I bought separately. I do have one piece left. If you can see here, there's a gap there, and that is because uh, it's very hard on these roof lines to get a perfect line that's gonna fit everything like so nice. You can do it, it's just gonna take you a long time. And already, these two pieces up here have gotta be some of the worst cuts. I hate doing these, I really do. Um, uh, I do not look forward to cutting these ever. I don't care if it's FRP or stainless steel. I am gonna put a aluminum angle bracket right there. I'll spray paint it white so it matches nicely. I'll caulk that right there. And this part's the worst. And also this one right here, cutting this little uh, duck looking thing there, like a little beak. And then down here, that one's not too bad, but this one is, is horrible to cut. Just wanted to show you that before I finish up this video, I do have this last piece left right there. And then we'll just make uh, the, fi the final touches on here, make it look really nice and sharp. But that's what it is. Thanks again for watching, for subscribing, for commenting. Thanks again, Frank Baltiers, I am out of here.